Bowen. Mayor Pro Tem Wilcoxon. Present. Mayor Brown. Present. Councilmember Sweet. Councilmember Tucson. Present. Councilmember D. Simmons. Councilmember J. Simmons. Councilmember King. Present. Four present. There is a quorum. I have a motion to. Um, but I move to excuse uh, council members D. Simmons, J. Simmons, and Sweet. They're on their way. Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anthony Simmons. Never know. All right. Any opposed? We just collectively call the DJ, right? DJ, yeah. All right. <laughs> um, please rise as you are able for a moment of silence in the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, thank you. I will entertain a motion for agenda approval. Uh, I move to approve the agenda. Support. Are there any updates or changes anyone would like to make? Not at this time. All right. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. This is our first opportunity for public comment. Um, you'll have three minutes to address council. We don't have anyone signed up, but is there anyone in the audience of the staff who would like to speak to us or online? Yes, one hand is raised. A Luna Houston. I'll allow them to speak now. Good evening. All right, you'll have three minutes to address council. Thank you. Um, yeah, as you said, my name's Luna. I've been a Washtenaw County resident since 2009, and I'm an organizer with Care Based Safety. Um, I'm here to request that the city use 40% of its cannabis revenue to support an unarmed mental health and crisis response program that will be piloted in the county and hopefully in Ypsilanti this year. Care Based Safety is a local, independent, not for profit organization which has designed and partially funded a pilot program that will engage in conflict resolution, de-escalation, and mental health support, as well as capacity building programs for communities to address these crises themselves. As you know, the criminalization of cannabis use and possession has contributed to decades of arrests and incarceration that have separated families. People who've experienced profiling, arrest, and incarceration are therefore less likely to call for help if that help will bring police. As a result, many people have no official support that they feel safe calling for help. That includes people having conflicts with their neighbors, children with suicidal ideation, and folks who have recently experienced significant violence or trauma. Um, so care-based safety is hoping to fill that gap and we believe that using cannabis revenue to support a safe alternative for, re for life-saving resources um, is a path toward justice. If funded, the program will, use, will provide community building, skill training, and well-paying jobs that support Ypsilanti residents' well-being. Um, from the 60% of remaining funds, we would also like to ask that you invest in affordable and accessible housing as housing insecurity is a significant source of underlying stress and conflict in our county. Thank you for your time, and I hope you'll consider investing in this important transformative work. Thank you. Is there anyone else who is online? If anyone else would like to make comment, please raise your hand now. Other hands raised, Council. Seeing none, we'll close public comment. All right, next up our presentations and we have Bob Davis from the Washtenaw Regional Resource Management Authority. Uh, City Manager, do you have anything before? You or okay. or Would you like to introduce him? Bob Davis of the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're ready. <laughs> Appreciate that, uh, that warm welcome. Um, so I'm here uh, on behalf of the authority, and I think the last time I spoke to you, it was a, it was a cold, wintry night, and um, it was several years ago when we were just 
starting the authority and and I was uh, your your lawyer had was looking at uh, uh, the articles of incorporation and so the authority's been in existence for a while now and we've done a lot of work on the original mission of the authority which was to try to get out a standard message on recyclables and what is uh, recyclable in the, in, in, in the state of Michigan. And we've received several grants and we've been doing some pretty good work on that. We're now at a point where we wanna test the market with respect to our authority in terms of uh, gathering together those communities who contracts seem to be coming to a close at relatively the same time periods and see what the market would bear if we went out for a joint RFP process Right now we're looking at, I've given this a uh, uh, similar discussion to the township here in Ipsy, given a similar presentation to Dexter, a similar presentation to Pittsfield, Saline, And those are the communities whose contracts seem to be coming to a, um, um, an ending roughly in the same time period. It's difficult when we start an authority because everybody's under existing obligations and it's hard to get everybody matched up to go out for a common RFP. So what we're hoping to do is gain your support to be part of that process. I wanna start off by saying there's, there's nothing binding going on here. There's, there's nothing that you're committing to except um, the right to have your um, uh, representative to warm up, bring, um, to the meetings, the continued support and information that we get and allow us to put an RFP together for you to look at, um, just for you to look at. As you know, from my previous conversations with you, I, I represent the, the South Oakland County Authority. I represent the Mid-Michigan Waste Authority. I just put together um, 36 communities in Mid-Michigan under, uh, under an RFP and a contract process. So that was about 30% legal work and about 70% psychological work, um, trying to bring 36 communities into one RFP, into one set of contracts for waste hauling with all the peculiarities of, of all the communities. And we understand that you would have peculiarities that you would want in an RFP. You would, um, you would want um, certain things and we wanna bring those to bear in the RFP process. So we, we want to test the, uh, the concept that, that worked so well for us in Oakland County was getting rid of the um, geographical boundaries of the communities and allowing waste haulers to operate in a segment versus, um, versus individual communities where you know, the truck gets to a certain road, it has to stop. It has to stop and, and, you know, because it's now going into a different community. And we found in, um, in 2016 and again in 2021 in Oakland County when we further lift, lifted those barriers of, uh, of, of the communities and allowed um, the um, service providers to vote on a block as opposed to individual communities, our rates went down by 16%, which was a significant uh, accomplishment. We did the same thing up north, even though it's a combination of 36 communities, the geographical boundaries are not binding the uh, service providers. We ended up with two contractors, priority waste and waste management up north. And, and so what, what they're able to do is, we all think they have a magical box somewhere, a rate optimization box where they can put in all of the households and, and if they don't have to stop at boundary lines and they can continue their flow, their efficiency goes up and their costs go down. And so um, what, we're, what we're here tonight to, to, to ask is um, your, your consideration and your you know, sort of blessing that, that um, we would move forward in, in preparing what an RFP document might look like uh, for all of the five communities whose contracts will be coming up. And then that you would get an opportunity with, uh, with Mr. Barr and, and others to look at that RFP and to um, give us input on what other peculiar or particular needs uh, this community would want in any waste hauling uh, agreement going forward and, um, and your support on that process. That's where WARMA is right now. And that's, um, that's our, our next mission is to, is, to, is to get an RFP out there
eventually we want to get all the communities under the contracting arrangements, but some of them will have to enter into these contracts at a later time. So I really um, would want to listen to your questions. Um, point, I, I, I think you understand we've had this discussion before with some of you look familiar, some look new. Um, but uh, I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Questions from council. Mayor Pro Tem. Can you remind me of the five communities? I know there's us, there's the township, there's Ann Arbor joined after our initial um, thing. And then yeah, so we have Sio, um, Pittsfield, Ann Arbor, Exeter, Saline, Pair of Ypsilanti's. Um, Oh boy, you're really challenging. Is Chelsea? Oh, so the five are just the ones that have yeah, the, the five. The five, the five that we're talking about now are Ypsilanti Township, Ypsilanti City, City of Ypsilanti, Dexter, Saline, and Pittsfield. I also just had the pleasure of working with uh, folks in, in in Van Buren Township to get their uh, most recent contract in place uh, through an RFP process. So um, if you look online under Van Buren and look at their RFP, you can get a sense of the kind of document that we prepared for them or that I prepared for them. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I have a question. I'm just uh, wondering, because I know you were saying the township and one of the things that I'm interested in the city thinking about that some of our um kind of other municipalities in the areas around composting and that township i know has a site is that do you all handle that as well yeah so the, the, mm -hmm. the rfp would be for um, trash recyclables and yard waste so trash to a lawful legitimate landfill, recyclables to a MRF for management, hopefully a rebate program where the community could see some payback for the recycled commodity sales, and yard waste to a compost facility, normally at the discretion of the service provider. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, that is an option that it, that compost. Yeah, I was I was thinking more about food compost, not yard waste. Yeah, uh, I I I I think we're evolving, you know, um, more and more towards the food waste as being a a compost item. It's it's. I did a a, a study on that by um, in Oakland County by taking all the food waste from the zoo um, for a period of one year, and it worked out very well. We have a large compost facility in Rochester, Michigan, and it did not impact the odor or the quality of the compost at all. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I did with with Warm, I don't know if you, Bonnie, if you were at the meeting at one, at, but I, we had one of the meetings at Warm and we um, had a lunch and um, plates and silverware and food and and. Um, somewhere during the meeting, I said, well, what do you think uh, we have here today that's compostable, right? Everything was compostable that I put out. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Every plate, every piece of silverware, all the food waste was, was all compostable. Mm -hmm. Well, and especially if you have, like, to do, like, a lot of the utensils and the plates, right? You have to yep. be able to get it hot enough and yep. all yep. of those things, so... Because I know a lot of our businesses are moving to having yep. more compostable, you know, things, but we don't really we don't have a way to actually process it. You study if you study, you know, off off a little topic here, but we're on one of my favorite. Mm -hmm. I, I like to to look at it. Food waste is a huge burden on our landfills. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's an absolute burden on the landfills. We we throw away so much food and food related materials. It's a, it's a real burden. It's, it's mm -hmm. it takes up a lot of landfill space. And it, I mean, and it yeah. sort of tweaks the, the degradation of what, what, what's in the landfill in not always positive ways by creating too much leachate too quickly. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's obviously such a huge issue with uh, climate gases as well. And in some ways, based on where recycling is now and how little is recyclable um, in lots of ways, you know, I would say like composting and like some of that actually has is would be almost more important <laughs> to to our like sustainable goals. We, we, in lots we, of ways. we have found um, over the years that if if when these groups get together and Recycling tends to go up because um, as an as an authority, we we monitor and we have um, data on on recycling. And you know, when when we attend the board meetings, we, you know, your recycling was a little bit down, and yours was way up, Stephen. Good for you. And um, and it, it it gets to be a thing where the communities are promoting it more. And I think if you give the folks a bigger container, um, people always ask me, how do you get people to recycle more? Well, you give them a bigger container. And if you give them a bigger container, they fill the container. Uh, end of study, you know, $25,000 study, done. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, we, um, uh, in, in most of the contracts we're doing right now, we're at a minimum at 64 gallon recyclable containers, but a lot of people are opting for the 95 and the 95 garbage in and uh, recycling. Um, so question taking it away from compostables, but to dollars and cents. Are there ideas already in terms of when you all plan to present the RFP around how costs will be shared amongst uh, the different communities? Is it going to be based on the amount of, you know, recyclables waste or size of the community <laughs> mile is there any action? no we haven't we haven't we're not at that at that juncture yet um we're not at the juncture where there, there are several other components that where you can save money on, on on waste management number one if you if you keep the service provider out of the billing operation your, your pricing goes down if they don't have to have an individual contract with every household um price goes down and if if you're willing to go a five and a five to form a 10-year possibility, the prices go down. Um, if you're willing to take and centralize a call system for complaints and follow-ups, the, the pricing uh, generally goes down. So we're, we're still looking at those hurdles because we're analyzing how each community currently raises their money for purposes of, of Trash recycling and yard waste collection and management. Um, we, you know, we've had experience all over the state with, you know, some communities don't do anything. Some say get your own contract. Some do user fees. Some put it on the taxes twice a year. Some have, you know, millage all kinds of different arrangements. Um, but we have found that if if we Mayor, we, we, we would get similar rates for everybody. So we would get one set of rates and, 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 and you would only pay, you know, per service unit, we call them service units. And, and that's basically a rooftop, um, a household residential service unit. And we would try to get a rate, you know, per month, per year, over 10 years with some, you know, escalating costs of what that service unit's gonna cost. And then you would know how many service units you have and you would have the right under the contract to add or delete from the service unit count. Some people um, are still in a position where they're gaining service units because there's more, there's still development going on. Some are, are full. Um, and so you'd have some control over that. In South Oakland, you know, a lot of those communities are mature and, and fairly developed. And you have, um, if, if you want to talk about the ability to manage the particularities of communities, you have Birmingham is the, is the northern edge of that authority. And Hazel Park is the southern edge. And Birmingham has a lot of peculiarities um, with, respect to their, with respect to their waste. Um, some days I, I frustrated, I think Birmingham wants the service provider to come in, manage the waste, clean the house, vacuum, do the dishes, <laughs> put the waste in the receptacle, spray it with Glade, and then put it out. Um, and, and so they're, they're, they're a little more demanding than, you know, some of the others. And you could be too. 
um, you, you could have your particular needs put into this uh, RFP process. So when, when, uh, when people get involved in these authorities, I had one, uh, one person put it to me very, very succinctly. He says, here's my level of service. I'm in no rush to get into an authority where I dip down to meet the medium of everybody else. That's not going to happen. If you're here, our goal is to have you here, okay, and for everybody to be there under one cohesive contract. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Prozan? So with the, um, with the RFP, one of the things that we struggle with is getting multi-unit uh, yep. buildings in on it. And um, is that standard? Have you done that in the other? Yep, so uh, we do, if, if you want them in, we put them in. Um, what are the other concerns when we join? I, I don't mean, to, but we also do, you know, we try to form a drop off center, mm -hmm. we try to uh, build in uh, hazardous waste days. Um, we try to build in, you know, um, all those other programs as well into the contract containers, uh, dumpsters for the community strategically placed in the contract where you want them as a state, um, your city receptacles, if you will. Um, staff likes that. Um, Applying for you. Um, and we try to get those managed as well. Special event dumpsters, all in the contract. Very cool. Very good. Um, one of the concerns when we first joined the authority um, that were expressed by other people was the job security of the people who are yep. currently doing it. So I remember that. I just wanted to ask staff that you know assure assure those people that there are plenty of other things for the staff to be doing besides doing the recycling and trash pick and and if that was the desire to keep those that we, we would work that into the contract right uh, additional so, uh, so at this time all we're all we're looking for is just um you know there's no it's, it's just can we can we can we get you an rfp so you can look at it it doesn't mean you have to do it. it. Doesn't mean you know you're going to do it. Um, I know that Attorney John Barr will find all of my typos and 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 make all the necessary changes and and make his recommendations based on all of your input. But all we're looking for right now is just just to get five on board with what an RFP might look like. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We, yeah. we need to move. We have to vote on that. I think I'm moving a motion just to continue the RFP process. A motion to continue with the RFP process with Warmer. Is that sufficient? That's perfect. Okay, great. So I move to, um, I guess, continue the RFP process with Warmer. Support. Yeah. Support. Third moved and supported three times. <laughs> anyway. I want to remind everybody I was born here in Ypsilanti in 19. Oh. Right? Oh. I just want to remind you, I told you that last time. I'm not sure if any of you believe me, but <laughs> I was born and raised. 59, really? I was 19, <laughs> 1959. <laughs> um, born and raised in Garden City. And on the, on, the, on the afternoon when I was supposed to be born, um, the hospital was full. Wow. And my parents quickly got on Michigan Avenue and kept driving until the hospital took them and so on. My birth certificate, born in Ypsilanti. <laughs> you I think the hospital's gone now, though. I think. Oh, probably. Fire. probably fire. Fire. Fire hospital? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yes. Oh, yeah, you were born in Ypsilanti. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> thank, thank you very much. I, I always like coming out here. It's a pleasure. Uh, any further discussion before we vote? See. Oh, just a comment. Um, given that we've reviewed the budget and there's always a shortfall in the uh, garbage um, and we subsidize that from the general fund, this totally makes sense to me. Yep. All right. Seeing none, Claire Kalanga. Mayor Brown. Yes. Council Member Sweet. Yes. Council Member Tucson. Yes. Council Member D. Simmons. Yes. Council Member J. Simmons. Yes. Council Member King. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Wilcoxon? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you so much. We look forward to Thank you all very much. RFP. Thank all right. Next, we have um, a proclamation declaring May as Mental Health Awareness Month, the Mental Health Month. 
um, go ahead and that. Whereas mental illness is thought to be caused by various genetic and environmental factors, and whereas mental health includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being, it affects how we think, feel, and act. It also affects how we handle stress, relate to others, and make choices. And whereas mental health is foundational to our wellness, allows us to care for ourselves and others, and make valuable contributions to Michigan's communities. And whereas, according to, to Mayo Clinic, mental illness is common. About one in five adults has mental illness in any given year. Mental illness can begin at any age, but most cases begin earlier in life. And whereas mental illness can be long lasting or temporary. And whereas mental illness is known to be a leading cause of disability, if left untreated, it can potentially cause severe emotional behavior and physical health problems. And whereas in Michigan, nearly 4.5% of adults live with serious mental health conditions such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and major depression. But only 43.6% of adults with mental illness receive any form of treatment from either a public system or private provider. And whereas approximately one in five Michigan youth have at least one mental health condition. In 2017, 13% reported having a depressive episode. Fewer than half have been able to access care. And whereas there's no sure way to prevent mental illness, however, taking the necessary steps to control stress, pay attention to warning signs, get routine and medical care, get help when, when needed, take good care of yourself may help keep your system symptoms under control. And whereas good mental health is critical to the well-being of our families, communities, schools, and businesses. And whereas greater public awareness about mental illnesses can change negative attitudes and behaviors towards people with mental illnesses. Now, therefore, I, Nicole Brown, Mayor of the City of Ypsilanti, hereby proclaim May 2023 as Mental Health Awareness Month in the City of Ypsilanti, given under my hand and seal of the City of Ypsilanti, May 16, 2023. Um, I think it's just important for us to lift it. I know we talked about it at the last meeting, um, but of course, making sure that we formally recognize Mental Health Awareness Month is really important for multiple reasons. Um, and it also is near and dear to my heart. So what I do for a living every single day, I work with adults, children, and families um, who are either severely emotionally disturbed or experience um, intellectual developmental disabilities um, to make sure they can live full, robust lives and be fully integrated into their communities. And so breaking the stigma is very, very important um, for all of us to do to make sure that we uplift and empower others despite whatever barrier they may experience because we all experience barriers. It's just different. Each person is just very, is different. Um, so Appreciate everybody listening. Are there any other comments before we move on? All right, thank you. Okay, well, next we have our consent agenda. So that's me, it's resolution number 2023-089, resolved by the Council of the City of Ypsilanti that the following items be approved. One, resolution number 2023-090, approving the minutes of the May 16th. May 2nd. May 2nd. Oh, okay, it's a typo yeah. there, okay. The May 2nd, 2023 City Council meeting and resolution number 2023-091 approving ordinance number 1413, an ordinance entitled an ordinance to impose a moratorium on issuance of new marijuana permits for sale or dispensing of marijuana in the city of Ypsilanti for 180 days, second reading. And I so move. Support. Been moved and supported. Uh, consent agenda. Oh. Council Member Sweet. Yes. Councilmember Tucson? Yes. Councilmember D. Simmons? Yes. Councilmember J. Simmons? Yes. Councilmember King? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Wilcoxon? Yes. Mayor Brown? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Mayor Pro Tem, you have our first resolution. Uh, what? Yep, 092. I have 093, and I have the contract. Oh, there it is. Ah, oh, yeah. Well, this is a long one. <laughs> uh, resolution 2023-092, approving contract and authorizing notice. Um, uh, city of Ypsilanti, County of Washtenaw, State of Michigan, minutes of regular meeting of the City Council, the governing body of the City of Ypsilanti, County of Washtenaw, State of Michigan, held on uh, 16th of May, 2023, at 7 p.m., <laughs> uh, prevailing Eastern time. Um Following preamble, the resolutions were offered by me and supported by somebody else. Uh, whereas it is necessary to acquire and construct certain improvements to the wastewater treatment plant, including improvements to the plant's ultraviolet, light, ultraviolet and disinfection system, 
Headworks odor control system and influent well, together with all necessary pertinences and attachments there to the project, to serve the city and the charter township of Ypsilanti, the township, and whereas a contract, the contract, has been prepared among the city, the township, and the Ypsilanti Community Utilities Authority, uh, whereby the authority will issue its bonds on behalf of the city and the township to provide for the financing of costs of the project, and whereas this governing body has carefully reviewed the contract and finds that it provides the best means for accomplishing the project uh, for providing the needed service. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the contract is hereby approved by approved in the mayor and the city clerk of the city are hereby authorized and directed to execute and deliver the contract for and on behalf of the city, provided, however, that the contract shall not become effective until the expiration of 45 days after the publication of the attached notice as a display advertisement of at least one quarter page in size of the Washington Washington All Legal News, a newspaper of general circulation within the city, which manner of publication is deemed by the governing body to be the most effective manner of informing the taxpayers and electors of the city of the details of the proposed contract and rights of referendum thereunder. The city clerk is directed to publish the, con the, the attached notice in the newspaper above designated as soon as possible after the adoption hereof. Um, all resolutions and parts of the resolutions in conflict with this resolution be and the same hereby are repealed. And then the rest is for the clerk. I hereby certify that the foregoing is true and complete copy of the resolution adopted by the City Council of the City of Ypsilanti, County of Washington, State of Michigan, at a regular meeting on May 16th, 2023, that said meeting was conducted and public notice of said meeting was given pursuant to in full compliance with the Open Meetings Act being Act 267 Public Acts of Michigan 1976, and that the minutes of said meeting were kept and will be or have been made available as required by said act. And I so move. Support. All right, it's been moved and supported. I believe, Lou. Lou? Yeah. Hi, good evening. I'm sorry, I got a text good evening. away from heaven. No, good evening, Mayor Brown and members of council. I guess initially, hopefully the disruption outside has been minimized. There. I've heard a few little hiccups, but hopefully it's not going too bad and they're going to get out of the quickly. Um, the bond issuance before you tonight involves two capital improvement projects at the water treatment plant. Um, the two projects, the one is improvements to the ultraviolet disinfection system, which is basically the disinfection of the wastewater before it leaves the plant. Um, it includes replacement of what we call the gear or the mechanical equipment in the original three channels that was installed in the early 2000s. Uh, I believe Mr. Castro came before city council a couple years ago when we were uh, installing equipment in the fourth channel. So we are just basically going back and upgrading the original three uh, channels um, because that equipment is no longer serviced by the uh, manufacturer. The opinion of probable cost for that project is just north of $2 million. The second project that's part of this bond issuance is a much larger and more complex project. It involves the headworks odor control system at the wastewater treatment plant, uh, mainly replacement of chemical tanks, fans, uh, some duct work, and um, pumps, those type of appurtenances that are part of the, that system. Another piece of that is um, rehabilitation of what we call the plant influent wet well, which is where all the wastewater from all the communities comes into the facility. It's concrete. Uh, it was coated back in the early 2000s, but since then there's significant corrosion and deterioration inside of that structure that needs uh, attention. So we will be as part of this project bypassing that structure and uh, repairing the concrete and putting on a new coating. Uh, that project, including the odor control, uh, the opinion right now is just north of uh, $8.4 million. Both of these projects are eligible for funding through the state revolving fund program. Uh, it, they are also eligible for uh, an 800000 just just shy of $800,000 grant uh, through ARP, the American Rescue Plan Act, I believe it is. And I also have uh, our bond counsel here, Tom Colas, who's can go over more of the details of the bond uh, process and issuance. Thank you. Good evening. Great. Good evening. So the resolution that you read, I drafted along with the contract. And as indicated, this really, there's a contract amongst the city, the township, and the authority that kind of lays out that the authority would issue the bonds through the, the drinking water, sorry, the clean water revolving fund program. This year, um, that rate 
for a 20 year financing is 1.78, sorry, 1.875. So one and seven eighths. Um, the contract allows up to 30 years, even though the expectation is we're going to do a 20 year financing. Once the bids come in, the project is expected to be bid in May with bids uh, being received in June. Um, and right now the schedule that we're on with the state is a state fourth quarter schedule, which would have um, financing completed in August, uh, late August. The state is actually the purchaser of the bonds through this program. So we're not going out to the market. The state buys these bonds and the rate is set based on whether you do the 20 year or 30 year. Um, the 20 year again is one and seven eighths. The 30 year is two and an eighth. So the expectation because of the useful life of the assets, or at least some of the useful life of the assets that are being financed, the expectation is to utilize the 20 year at the one and seven eighths percent. Um, but this, what you have in front of you, authorizes that contract under Act 233, which is the statute that uh, incorporates the authority. The contract is approved, but subject to uh, a right of referendum. And so each local unit, so this would approve the city publishing that notice. And within that notice, there's a right of referendum. The township will consider that at their meeting also tonight. And they would publish their own notice that would have its own right of referendum. So if no petitions are filed within the 45 day time period, YCUA would then consider authorizing the issuance of the bonds after the bids are received and then finalizing that dollar amount. So right now we have a not to exceed amount of 11.5 million. The expectation and the hope is that it would be less than that. And we would not need to finance the portion of the project that the ARP grant would cover. So again, that's about Right now, seven hundred ninety-nine thousand five hundred dollars. So just shy, just shy of eight hundred. We would reduce the borrowing below that amount, and then finance what would be left um, once the bids come in. Um, Eagle is the one that would actually determine the final amount that they're willing to loan through the program, but we would be able to lock in those rates at the one and seven eighth or the two and an eighth. Um, happy to answer any questions on the contract. So there are there are a number of contracts that the city has with YCUA and the authority. Again, whenever we're financing improvements to the plant, that's a shared cost, not just between the city and the township, but also the other, other contracting municipalities with YCUA. So they actually cover over 50% of the cost. Isn't that right, Luke, um, the contracting municipalities? Correct. Yeah. Uh, the contract communities currently pay about 75%, uh, will pay about 75% of the so when you think about what we issue, about 75% is paid by them. And then the remainder is then split proportionately based on use between the city and the township. Right now, it's about a 25-75 split city versus township. Um, so hopefully that's a, a, a significant reduction and because there's a lot of, lot of community sharing in the cost of the plant. About 25%, 25%. Right, right. Okay. right. Um, you have questions? Were you all ready for questions? I'm complete, yes, thank you. Questions from council? Mayor Pro Tem? Um, you answered one of my questions about the, in the thing it said, uh, Chamber 4 was gonna be finished in 2021, but that makes sense. Um, the other thing I have is if you could address the escalation of payments. Um, so from the first payment to the last payment, it's about roughly doubling um, each time. So if you could explain that. So what we're trying to put together is kind of a level debt service. So when you factor in the cost of interest that's being paid on top of those, we're trying to provide a level debt service. And actually, Nate Watson's here from PFM, the financial advisor. Um, Nate, is that debt service across all of the debt for YCOA or just for this particular financing? Do you remember? Right. So what we're looking at is kind of leveling up the actual debt payment that's done on an annual basis. So that's why you see that kind of escalating principle. Um, because you're covering more interest in the earlier years and then you're kind of reducing it over time so that the actual payment will be level over the 20 year term. Okay. Um, and other bonds that we have with YCUA, what are those at current? So those interest rates will vary um, based upon when we sold them and whether we sold them out to the market or sold them to the state. So there were two shared projects last year that were financed through the clean water SRF and they were at the same interest rate that, that these would be. So the state kept their interest rates uh, level for the last two years. Um, they'll readjust those and potentially change those for next fiscal year. But right now 
they would be locked in at the one and seven eighths. Now, there are prior bond issues that might be, at, if we sold them to the state, they would have been at slightly higher interest rates. Mm -hmm. I don't have all of those off the top of my head, but they're probably in the low 2%. Mm -hmm. um, when we sell to the market, we're talking a much higher interest rate, probably three and a half, four percent 4%. Um, so the state program is really beneficial from an interest rate perspective and the ability to get federal dollars, at least this year, through the ARP funds. And so the so two years ago, we, we um, what was the term on that in terms of years for that bond? I want to say we also did a 20-year. Um, let me see if I have that. Yeah, it was a 20-year also. Yep. questions from council uh council member d simmons yes um this is i'm not sure this might be a question for you or not but when i was looking at the materials i think it was saying that the city typically uses its share of what we currently collect to pay for this the bonds that we would have oh um and so I was just wondering if kind of based on what's being projected, whether that would continue to be the case or whether there would have to be some kind of an additional amount that we would need to be pulling in to be able to pay for this. In regards to the capital improvement projects or the debt service payments as a standalone, this project is, uh, like for example, it, the first payment due in 25 is about $32,000. We have $50,000 worth of uh, city bond payments coming off the books and a number of additional, I mean, there's a very large bond coming off and also in 25 of about $300,000 in uh, payments. This is a small amount though of all the additional expenses. So I, I feel like that maybe be a larger question and why she is experiencing uh, just higher costs across the board for equipment or fuel uh, for a number of items that could still impact our budget. But as the, as capital improvement projects go, this is not influencing a substantial increase in, in the cost of water and sewer services. Uh, further questions? Uh, Mayor Paulson? Uh, just a comment, I love these contracts and that there's a, there's a clause in here that says, uh, uh, we're required to make payment to the authority promptly and at the times here and specified without regarding to whether the system is actually completed or placed in operation. And I get that part of that is, is we start paying before the work gets done. But I, I just, every time I see that, I just, you know, we can give you all the money and you can finish bonds and nothing could happen and we'd still have to pay for it. So, interesting. The, the good thing, the reality is we're, we're not going to pay debt service debt service isn't going to start, at least principal mm -hmm. isn't going to start until the project's completed. Yeah. So there will be interest that will be due to the state starting within six months of when we actually close the bond issue. But the way that the state program works mm -hmm. is you pay principal within a year of the date of initial operation. Um, so actually we're expecting to pay, the first principal isn't expected until 2025, just based on the timing of when the project's going to be completed. And then you have to pay within one year the first principal payment. Yep. That probably doesn't alleviate your issue with the contract, but maybe it makes you feel a little bit better about it. If there's nothing further, thank you both, all three of you. And Clerk Hellinger, please call the roll. Council Member Tucson? Yes. Council Member D. Simmons? Yes. Council Member J. Simmons? Yes. Council Member King? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Wilcoxon? Yes. Mayor Brown? Yes. Council Member Sweet? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Next on the agenda is our discussion on any amendments for the budget, fiscal year 2022-23, fiscal year 23-24. Uh, City Manager, do you have anything to start us off or someone starting us off? Okay. Um, Um, basically, we're here to see if council has any um, amendments or any discussions regarding um, what was in the budget. 
It says discussion. So at this time, I'd like to receive comments from council um, on the budget that we presented. I'll start with council. So, Council Member D. Simmons, you can. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Um, well, I'll start with um, some things that I, most of some things I kind of have been trying to figure out, some pieces of, and some things I know I sent to uh, Francis as well. So, I'll just start with those things. Um, I'll also say that as I was, as I've been looking at um, additions um, to the budget, I've in particular been um, thinking about our cabin, uh, cannabis revenue monies. Um, and so pretty much all the things that I'm putting forward, I see as things that could come directly out of that. Um, and uh, also to say that I know I mentioned a uh, desire for us to explore using participatory budgeting um, for this, for these funds. And obviously that's not possible like at this time this year, uh, but also just to say too, that each of these things are things that have kind of come forward in uh, previous community conversations, as well as thinking about um, uh, connections to um, thinking about ways that these funds could go to right wrongs. Um, from, so uh, just want to name that too. And so one is for, and I know um, somebody spoke during public comment about the care-based safety pilot um, for unarmed urgent response. And, um, and so I would like to propose um, at least 124,500 for that. Um, that amount would cover um, an outreach van uh, and supplies and materials for that, as well as uh, dispatcher services um, for that um, pilot that is launching here in the city of Ypsilanti. Um, and then, also, I would like to see us um, add money to the housing trust fund. So I'm proposing adding $100,000. We got to see how far that went for us um, with the last time we made an addition to the trust fund. So I'd like to see us um, make another addition. Uh, something else uh, I would like to fund, and I don't have... Uh, I'll, I have kind of a very rough estimate. Um, I haven't been able to like price this out, but um, this is something that a couple of us um, during conversation around um, commissions that um, Councilmember King and Sweet and I, along with uh, uh, City Clerk Halinga, um, were meeting and working on that uh, something we came up with in terms of thinking about how we could do a commission fair and other maybe other city business that could be fun too. Uh, and also thinking about ways to connect the wards is um, doing a field day. Um, so doing a field day event uh, and this could be something that one of our commissions could actually plan. Um, but then also we can have this information there as well. So we can do multiple things at once. Um, so anyway, so I put, I'm just putting forward $10,000 within that. Um, and then the last thing, um, and I meant to do some subtraction with me, but um, in terms of thinking about uh, a traffic calming and pedestrian and cyclist safety study that's uh, resident uh, led, uh, thinking very much about something similar to the subcommittee on housing affordability and accessibility um, and something that um, could possibly go be within the non-motorized committee um, as well and to have funds that would actually help to support that work. Um, and so I know I've been um, in emails with Bonnie and there's some more conversation to be had in terms of trying to figure out what the amount could be because 
it can obviously um, differ or it can expand and contract based on what it is um, that it's focused on. But I also see this as being something that might be multi-year. It might not only be a one-year um, thing. So I want to put those things forward. Thanks. Uh, well, I don't have, wait, hold on. Let me just look at this last email. I don't have a, a figure, but I can, I'll put, um, so I don't, Hold on, let me see here. Yeah, I don't have a, a, a kind of final figure, but I would say I'll put in um, because the, what was, what, let's see here. She said, basically we're looking at at least uh, 50 to 100K. So I would say 100,000. Thank you. What was it for again? Traffic calming. Traffic calming and pedestrian biking safety. Just for the study. Yes, for our study, right? Yeah. Mm hmm. And so one of the things I see too is that with um, the residents would be doing a lot of different work, but then there's some things that they'll need contracts for, you know, you have to have uh, different professional consultants some to do some work to make recommendations. I have a question. Did, um, I know, oh, Bonnie's not here, but did Bonnie have any ideas maybe around, are there like grant opportunities for Traffic calming pedestrians like studies of that nature. I would assume there may be funds for things like that, and maybe at the state that's, level. That's usually our uh, first go to. Um, Christopher, are you aware of anything? Oh, uh, He's over here. No, specifically for that purpose. Okay. Yeah. And can I add? I think of um, of this as also possibly being ways that. And so I know we're going to be making a fuller proposal to council in terms of our commissions, but that we um, we don't currently fund our commissions to do the work that we ask them to do. So one which one of the, so one of the things is thinking about this as a way to start off differently um, and to try to fund the work up front. Are you talking? You're talking about the board and commission thing. Yes. Field day. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. I was only talking about the pedestrian. No, no. This is. I'm talking about that too. I'm talking about that as being something that would happen within our commissions, uh -huh. and so us funding it is part of funding the work that we're asking our commissions to do. So I yes. have a question about the outreach van. Is that a vehicle that belongs to the city? No, it would belong to um, CBS, but then it would be stationed. It would be purposed for work in the city. So they would apply for this work. Well, I, I guess I'm trying to understand. So the work is hap will be happening regardless here. So they are an organization um, that will be doing work and launching here in the city, but it's not a city department. Oh, um, so may, okay. Wait. So this is like allocating funds to an organization who's doing work within the communities where you're asking us. And this might yes. be for a vehicle or to support the work that's already going to be happening in Ipsy. I get it, but they so, haven't made a request or anything. And what about other organizations? I was just clear. Oh, these are, we'll talk about this. Yes, yes. I've seen, yeah. So we, we, I don't know whatever the process, I'm just naming this as something that we had as one of our major goal setting pieces in terms of what, what will happen, like having something. So I'm just seeing this as a way we could support work that is benefiting our goals and able to provide a service that the city currently is unable to provide. I see our chiefs have their hand, one of the chiefs. Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. Yeah, uh, if you could, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I just wanted to make sure I was understanding. We're talking about considering um, a completely separate response for mental health. Are we, I mean, currently we have a, a process in place that's being uh, run by the county. It's a pilot program that's going on. And from the numbers that I'm seeing, the city is receiving the bulk of that of that service. And I think it's important, uh, what I call responsible uh, co-respondership. There are a lot of nuances to that. So I, I just wanna say, I'd like to be involved in in the conversation about there, there are some nuances that we have to make sure that we cover. And so that we're not, uh, putting people in, in jeopardy and we make sure we're doing the right thing responsibly and we still maintain the safety and responding to these types of calls, but also utilize the data that the pilot program is, is currently gathering and that kind of drives. We want to make sure we're, that we're data-driven, you know, and we're making decisions, you know, about what we're, what we're doing that is data-driven. So that's all. Thank you. Yeah. So just to add that, so this um, organization is pulling from things happening around the country, right? And so, um, and look and doing models that are not co-response, but non-police response. So what the county is doing is different in that way. Um, and also based on community engagement and things that folks have been asking for, they've been asking for that. And that's one of the things Folks have actually expressed, um, you know, like a lack of using that, the, the county's uh, program because of the co-response, you know, the co-response part of it. And so um, this is looking at what is being seen as really cutting edge in other parts, but also based on long-term success um, of, some models uh, out west, um, in particular the northwest. Um, so I just want to name that all of the concerns you have are 100% um, concerns that I think all of us would have. We want all people, right, to be safe and all workers to be protected. Um, and so I would only want us to be working with groups, organizations. Um, that hold that to a very high standard. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to um, hear from them um, because we haven't heard anything from them and I'd like to know, um, you know, what they would be providing, what, you know, what their service would be and how all this flows. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We've never seen them and we haven't had a report from them. Mm -hmm. So that would be very important you know, in order to grant money and to- A hundred percent. Okay. So would you want, um, I know uh, one of the co-directors spoke during public comment. And as I said, I know that this is launching, um, but would that be asking them to come and do a presentation? That's something that folks would want them to do and they can do a presentation for council and we can schedule that, schedule that in. Yeah, that would be important for, for them to do. Uh, Mr. Burr? Also, if they could, uh, when they come, advise us on their legal status, 501c. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And also mm -hmm. insurance. Sure. I'm just thinking, you know, if this is something we want to do, then we should open it up to other people. Like, should we do like an RFQ? And we'd know other people's qualifications because it looks like we just pick someone. And so, I mean, I'm happy. I mean, what would be that process in terms of putting some, I'm, I mean, well, I can't, I mean, let me back up. Right? <laughs> I can't speak for them at all. <laughs> I, I'm like, I don't know, but in terms of what to put forward, I'm, I mean, I would love, I just want to make sure as we're going through the budget process that we're putting, that we are considering all of these things at this time. And we know that this is something that we had as our goals. So I would love whatever, if there's a process, if there's like, here's how we put out this RFQ, here's our timeline for that, here's how people will answer it. Like, I think that that's great and perfect. And I would encourage them to go through that process. So I'm not trying to skirt a process. I just know that as we're in budget and looking at these things, I was trying to reach out and figure out numbers for us to include. 
And so I think that that would be perfectly fine. And I'm sure that they would be, you know, they would expect to have to do presentation and things like that too. So, okay. I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that because sometimes um, at the end we'll, you know, something will say, well, I mentioned them in the discussion, you know? So I was expecting this, you know, to go to them and that kind of thing Mm because their name has been mentioned. And so I just want the record to show that it's just a concept and it's something that we would like to see and we take it through the process. Yeah. Okay, that, thank you. Clark? I'm sorry. I mean, if this is an amendment that council would like to see in the budget, I would just suggest allocating this this amount to a non-armed um, intervention. Mm-hmm. Right, right, rather than an actual organization by name. Yeah, right. that's, what I, that's what I was actually going to add on the end yeah. is that while we, I think we have shared um, agreement that this is something that we want to put forth, you know, efforts and funds toward, but without naming it. Um, and then we can discuss whatever that number would look like and settle on that and then set it aside. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then how would we start a process in terms of doing the RFQ and whatever that would be? So that will come later. We work with our um, city attorney and we work with council as well to see what we are looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, make sure we get the approval from council that yes, this is what we want before we release it. And Mr. Byer will look at it for all the legal things that they have to have mm-hmm. before we um, issue it, before we post it. Okay. okay. And then that would open it up to other Maybe. entities mm-hmm. that would potentially want to participate. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. And so then we just, would we need to decide when we want to see that or is that something you can work on to um, that's not gonna bring come forward like, to us? That's not going to come like right away, <laughs> but this is the budget process. So that'll, come so if we choose to set the money aside then the next step after we approve the budget would be then that that process right we would work that out with Perfect. staff time and, and mr Byers time okay great thank you mm-hmm. uh, were, were those all of your uh like ideas that you wanted to put forward for now yeah i think so i think that was four i think that was probably enough thank you you. You, gave yeah. four, you gave four things okay uh anyone else have items no, no. I just have, do you have something? I do have a question. Just the two million dollars they talked about releasing it. Is that something that we're already doing or is that something that we vote on for the train, for the train project? So that money is set aside already for the train. Um, specifically for that, we would have to make the decision as a body if we wanted to remove that from its separate. Okay. First earmark, thing. right? Earmark, yeah. Um, I have, so I have a question um, and I thought, I, I think I might've asked this already, but so when we were looking at um, the social equity money and the funds that we had set aside and in, in the, the current budget, I believe we have not allocated that money to any particular places. Correct. We have been using that for, um, for um, permits, special events, things of that, the fee waivers, yep. So the things that were in the budget last year, like um, barrier busters and those like community programs have not been funded this year because that's what that's where that money came from in the previous budget. Right. Okay. And I'm bringing that up because I think that that is an important one to think about um, and to continuing our support of barrier busters, seeing that Ypsilanti City is one of the primary like top users of that money. And we... Um, our residents th- dissolved that those funds rapidly um, in the two years prior that we provided them with that additional support. Um, I also know that Hawk is like, expanding their services and have brought it into the county. And so there's going to be more individuals from the city who are looking for support from the county level. Um, and I'm also trying to work with our county officials to figure out how we could better support folks with, in housing and houselessness um, in terms of like, you know, funding. So I want to just put that out that I I would like us to name and provide support to Barrier Busters. Oh, the dollar um, amount? 25000 okay. is the number. Thank you. Other budgetary items for discussion? I have a question. Yes. Um, questions for Bonnie. <laughs> She's my favorite one to ask questions to. Bonnie, is there any, I guess, 
needs. Cause you know, my concern I have, or one of my things I'm is, you know, our sewers and drains and, you know, that kind of stuff. And I'm wondering, is there a need for any money right at this moment that we need to consider, I guess, for any studies or anything like that, or, or work that would be helpful to alleviate some of the, you know, underlying issues we have as it relates to, you know, flooding and whatnot. Okay. <laughs> we need all the money. Right. Okay. So at this point, is it, is it helpful to provide any money at this point? You know what I mean? When we're thinking about how we're, we're utilizing, cause I mean, we obviously have a lot of good ideas that we've talked about, um, but infrastructure too is, you know, something to me that's really important. And Okay. This is for infrastructure. Uh, for mapping. Yes. Mapping. So in other words, how are you So then I oh sorry. Oh. Council, I just have a process question. We've not had um, an in-between meeting before the first and the second reading. So with these suggestions, would you like me to draft resolutions for the second reading? Or would you like to make motions today? Because currently no action's been taken on the budget. So it's whatever council would like. I'm sorry, one second. I mean, <laughs> city manager, sorry. So, so the finance director and myself, we're listing these. And we were going to bring back like what the total cost was, is, and allow council to say yay, nay. Yes. And then that would, you know, that would be in the motion. Okay. So then I'm going to make another one then to add on to mm -hmm. your list then um, for $50,000 towards um, storm sewer mapping. Right. Yeah. Um, because infrastructure, like I said, um, if we can't provide the basics to our residents, um, you know, and we will suggest some accounts and things of that nature. Yeah, cannabis works for me, but <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, we might have to pull from some of those. Okay. I'm just saying, but yeah, no, it's fine. but and um, because I think it's really important for us to support, okay. um, invest in our infrastructure. I agree. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Before we left the mess. Yeah, we already, we we already have, have the mess, mess. I mean, actually. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. We already have time to take mess. care of it, kind of like our roads. Yeah, yeah. I've been talking about roads today with. Well, anyway, yeah, yeah, a lot. Okay, uh, further discussion, Mayor Pro Tem, I saw your hand. Well, I had a question. Um, Bonnie was out while Desiree was talking, and so um, one of the proposals that Desiree put forward was um, hundred thousand for a traffic calming study. I'm not sure when the last time we had any of that done. Whether MDOT had. Um, with all the projects that are going and the traffic calling that we were already implementing, if there was a more comprehensive study. So it, it really depends upon what you mean by traffic calming. It's a pedestrian study and traffic calming, right? That and it's like, yeah, pedestrian and cyclist safety and traffic calming.
I, yeah, so I can say a couple of things. I'm happy for others to also suggest. I know folks are like, we're just, it sounded like people are like, oh, did we just do that? Um, I, okay, well, here's what I would say that I, I would, I would look for. One, um, I would look for, one of the reasons I was thinking about the non-motorized um, committee is to have folks that would be looking at this not through a driving vehicle lens, but through the lens of how people get around uh, by foot or by bike um, and thinking about, um, so I would want them to be looking at, um, you know, other infrastructure that's used in other places um, to do this. There's lots, I've hear, you know, I hear lots of things. I see lots of things. People send me lots of things, um, but, to be able to say, oh, this would be better in this place or this place or this place, I, I don't know. So I would love to have folks who can be seeing all the different options and possibilities and make suggestions that would be based on um, those kind of locations. I also see a, a deep need for a deeper community engagement around this issue. I don't know for the other council members, but I know that I get on average, two outreaches about traffic, speeding, um, noise uh, on streets, um, people not stopping at crosswalks for walkers, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I know I get that at least two twice a week. So I don't know what that looks like for folks. And so I think about um, that members in our community, um, especially because of the um, options that we can present them in terms of what they can do, which is very limited and also temporary. Even our speed bumps that we have are temporary. Um, and so I would be looking for things that could be more permanent and that we'd be able to, just as we look at all of our different infrastructure plans around curb cuts or all these different things, that we'd be able to kind of see this in a holistic matter and start to say, how do we work toward addressing these things more long-term um, and making it so that, you know, um, I know for instance, in the non-motorized committee, there's a goal. It's like, and I, I've seen this other places, it's like zero deaths, <laughs> like, uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. So I see this as also helping toward those kinds of things, right? And that there's there's different things that can be done. Um, and we can, you know, maybe be more creative um, about how we address this. Um, so deeper community engagement at the neighborhood level where they can identify, like, here's what we see as being these issues and where we are. Um, and also understand the issues that people see in other places um, so that they can think about how to ba balance these needs across the city um, because everyone sees their place as the least safe, right? <laughs> like this cross, this crossway is the, you know, horrendous until they hear, okay, this one is also bad, right? So I think that will actually help um, with the resident engagement and seeing us doing like addressing these needs in maybe a different way than how we can currently. Um, and then I, I think too, so being able to do that engagement, being able to do that research that, uh, and then being able to make recommendations based on place and, and put, you know, uh, I don't think of them being able to do full costing themselves. I see that as being something that they would need external support to do in terms of how much would it cost for us to do these range of things. Um, but to be able to put something forward for council and staff to, you know, be able to actually consider and to think about how would we um, actually put this into work. Oh. 
I mean, I guess I don't know exactly what that exactly what that plan entails, the non transportation plan um, in terms of I, I haven't when I went, I will say when I attended the non motorized committee meeting um, and kind of, you know, heard about what they were talking about and shared this idea. Um, there was a lot of excitement and you know energy and thinking oh this could match with some of the things that we're look already working on um and looking to do so um they so yeah so i say i would say that i think it's more conversation but they didn't seem that this seemed to think that this was um replicating something that they'd already put forward Mm -hmm. and, and it has like ideas of different things that we can do in different places. Yeah, that sounds great. I know I'm not losing it. I know Bonnie presented this to us. With, well, not this body, of course, but to us before the recommendations. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so then if there, so then I guess my question would be, this is my next question. If there already are recommendations to do these things, what is the next step to move it from that to something else? And, you know, so, I mean, I guess that that would be my, because like I said, right now, what we tell people is that currently we're at capacity for the temporary fixes that we have, and we don't have permanent fixes. So how do we get to any of those things? Would you go through the non-motorized commission? So you would start with the non-motorized commission, prioritize, and then you guys agree on what to bring forward and we find funding. And I think that the non-motorized commission So yeah, so then I guess we're still at the point of that we haven't funded any of that work. So I think regardless, I would say whether it's, so I guess this is another thing we can back up, right? From the language is like not calling it this specific thing, but to then instead put forward money that could be used for this goal of uh, increasing pedestrian and cyclist safety and doing traffic calming, permanent traffic calming measures. Um, and then whether we pull from a plan that currently exists or that might need to be updated for other things, um, the, you know, having the resident committee in and of itself isn't where the cost is. The cost is coming from the expertise that we need to do certain pieces, right? So I'm happy for those things to be separated out or, you know, if one thing doesn't need to, you know, but I think us still putting forward money to help fund the work. I think we still need to do um, because I recognize that if we only are going by um, when thinking about city services, if we're first only going to like think about sewers and whatever, we're never going to get to the fact that like a person doesn't stop their car when a two-year-old is pulling to walk into the street, <laughs> even though you're at a crosswalk and literally it would cost them nothing to slow down, right? Like that's not going to fix that. And so um, yeah, so I think we should still try to fund these efforts and try to move some things forward. So would you just change that from a survey to just allocating 100K to a uh, pedestrian bike or to the non-motorized? We can just make it general. Yes, I, I yeah, I would support doing that. Thank right. you. Mm -hmm. We can figure out details later. Mayor Pro Tem. I'd also like to hear from Chief Moore about um, the police department's uh, 
plan going forward to address the speeding? I, we had this conversation on our one-on-one, -on -one and and you had voiced some um, some ideas then, but um, for the larger discussion, I think that would be good. Thank you. Um, so I recognize that uh, pedestrian safety and, and speeding has definitely uh, has come up as an issue, you know, in the community. I've gotten uh, several emails from uh, most of you and then some from the citizens with concerns. And of course, uh, as a public safety, we want to uh, ensure that we address those issues. I won't waste time in saying, of course, uh, you know, we get, need to get to a certain level in staffing to do more than just respond to calls for service. Uh, we are changing the organization, but like uh, uh, Council Person D. Simmons said, holistically, we have to really look at this from a holistic standpoint. So for public safety, we have to do more with our public service announcements. We're looking at some grant opportunities to do more uh, signage and also electronic signs to uh, you know, increase awareness and just that visual acuity to say, hey, slow down. And then we're going to follow those things up with first warning and then enforcement. So there has to be a, um, a comprehensive, you know, step-by-step -step approach to really address some of the traffic and pedestrian issues. We also talked about um, some of the, you know, getting back the bike team uh, back in and to, you know, to help with some of our pedestrian things. Bicycles can get around. If you see police officers on bicycles, you know, doing the right things, it helps we want to, you know, model the behavior that we would want to see from the community. So we are working on a plan to address these concerns citywide, uh, especially our hotspot areas. We're also going to be using the data. I've uh, teamed with, with Bonnie's group. We've discovered some of the, uh, we do have some resources currently that will help us measure, you know, uh, how much traffic is, is going by in those different demographics so that we can use, again, data to really drive our response and to get uh, this kind of under control. So we are keenly aware of it as, you know, as I move through the organization and we start to uh, make those adjustments in how it's structured, we'll be able to address those issues a little bit more thoroughly. Thank Fair you. enough? Sure. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Okay. I bring that up because um, one of the most recent projects um, for traffic calming was bump pads um, down Congress. Um, and that's a, a habitual speeding zone. There's a stop sign right in front of the senior center and, and people blow through that at 50 miles an hour all the time. So, you know, while we're, you know, the non-motorized committee has, has put forward a number of things and all the projects that we have all have the, some of those traffic calming involved, what we really need to do is change behavior <laughs> and right. Um, and trying to do that with engineering is great, but, you know, we put in speed bumps and we speed, see people speeding between the bumps and, and, you know, it's like, how do, how do we address that? And so, um, holistically, holistically through many, many different avenues at the same time. So thank you. One of the things is, um, thinking about behavior that's different from when they are like really those like big bumps versus the more wide ones where you don't have to stop to go over. And so that more minimizes overall speed much more effectively. Yep. And then also, I know y'all, I know y'all think this is really a joke, but I'm just, I just have to say it because you just said it's about behavior a hundred percent. I agree. And I know I mentioned this, um, but I looked into it even more uh, in terms of what they had done down in Columbia with the traffic mimes. And it was actually not only the mimes, it was an additional piece where they had um, uh, thumbs up and thumbs down signs for the community members. So then people were changing their behavior mm -hmm. because they were seeing people responding to it. And they found that that reduced speeds and incidents um through those things because again it was a it was a it was just addressing the driver's behavior and um so i i just named that because i think i i always like to say that there's more than one way to change behavior and i think that you know you know having police and ticketing and those kinds of things might change some behavior, maybe. Um, although I think it's just 
pe more people get tickets <laughs> than the actual behavior changes. And um, I think we want people to slow down, not be afraid that they're going to get a ticket. Um, so I just want to name that. Thank you. Are there other members of council who have discussion items or potential additions to or subtractions on the budget? I'm just going to add. Please do. I just want to say in relation to traffic calming, whatnot, I, I do support like novel and innovative kind of solutions to that too, because I do think it has to be multifaceted. And I think, Bonnie, you've mentioned like, and we've tried a little teeny, teeny bit, but I think Celine was doing, was it like tactical urbanism and things like that? I think, right. So it's like, I don't know, a traffic mime, is that what you're saying? But are these thumbs? I don't, I mean, anyway, so I, I'm down for creative solutions too. You said, I want to write, you said tactical what? Urbanism. Okay. And they were doing some um, pilots with that in Celine, right? What if we had like a roving traffic clown? That would scare me. That's okay. <laughs> Just like pop out. <laughs> oh, that'd be so many accidents. Bumpy the truck. <laughs> yes. Listen. Oh. I, oh. I mean, clowns are scary. No? <laughs> Listen, Ipsy is eclectic as it is, so it would not be a surprise. A additional ideas. <laughs> May I approach they get in their clown car? Um, I guess I'd like to specifically um call out the non-motorized uh plan for the neighborhood connectors and the signage for that and that has been on their their um their list for a while and they've been working on it and put together maps for the connectors and the idea is to be able to ride your bike around uh the city uh without encountering the major uh um trunk lines um and there's a uh pattern of maps that that Mike Davis Jr. has put together um, that go from from ward to ward and it also serves as a connector to the city parks. Um, and one of the one of the questions that's come up in the last year is how to get funding for the uh, signage for that. Um, and so I'd like to put in uh, the notion of twenty five thousand dollars for the signage for that. All right. Um, anybody else for items to add remote <laughs> I, have one, I have one last thing sorry <laughs> no no I want I was asking I okay make sure everybody has a um I know that we've made a lot of strides in updates in park enhancements in the past several years um but um I think one area that across the city this um got equipment at the same time looking at adding some amenities to specifically to the tot lots. There's one in each ward. Um, the current amenities are functional, um, but I think adding smaller things because they're smaller parks, looking at a threshold of like 75,000, um, which would allocate if you're looking at making everything even about 25 per ward. Um, correct, yep. And I know that we've put in a grant for the prospect playground and that was denied, but, and that's, I know on the list um, of large scale replacements coming up, but looking at those specific areas, cause they target all three uh, boards in the whole city. So. Um, I have a question for probably Christopher and Bonnie and or Bonnie. 
Um, so going back to when we were asking about looking at like grant opportunities or um, whether it's just full um, support or partial, is there like a, a, a database that a municipality uses to look for those things? Or are we really out like searching for grant opportunities on our own? <laughs> yeah, a lot of times you're on a listserv, mm -hmm. so there's an opportunity to see grants and look there. Other times, databases, right? If you're not counting on using that notification, oftentimes the window of opportunity is very, very small in terms of that project you're ready to go. Yep. If you think about the project or even the grant, you don't have, you don't have time. So like we get um, in emails from like the Legal Project and Grant Finders and stuff about if like you have set criteria and you don't have enough time. Um, but generally what we have found works best like in terms of building a case, having like a few projects that we want to do and then finding the funding rather than um, having the funding and then finding the funding for the project. So it tends to be So, okay, I'm going somewhere with these these questions. So for like our department heads, each of you would then be the one searching out for funds. So we all don't have on, access. Like, you know. We have access. Yeah, you all. Okay. But I mean, if, if like, let's say Chief Hobbs wanted to do something for the fire department, you're looking for those grant opportunities on your own or you and your staff. You know, Clerk Kalenga, you'd be looking for things that have to do. So I guess what I'm getting at this is pie in the sky, maybe not for this fiscal year, but looking at maybe having a dedicated person, even if it's part-time to support in that, is that a possibility? Is that something you all do not prefer, don't like? Because I, I know in other municipalities, they do have dedicated grant writers and folks who literally spend their time looking for revenue, you know, and, and stream fund streams for projects and things we want to do. And I don't know if that's something in the future or in the near future that might be a good idea for, for us, especially since we're we're cash strapped. Um, I think that's important for the work that we are trying to, to move forward. So again, this is just me over here. You all are doing the work. So I don't know if that's something that would be, you know, you all would support or want, but it came to mind. Right. The time, right. Put a manic. What? Well, yeah. Wrangling. Huh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. So again, just an idea of something. I I don't know if it's something that I would want to put forward in this budget. We haven't teased it out or thought it through but as I'm thinking about like all these different priorities that we have and the things that we we want and I know I'm in a lot of meetings these days um, where I'm hearing about opportunities for for grants that we don't the windows are small we don't hear about them with enough time for us to build something out and I wouldn't want to put that pressure on anyone but if we had someone who that is their sole job to 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 find to write to manage that could free up a lot of your time to be you know, doing the things you want to do and also like getting some of our dreams and wishes maybe completed as well. Um, so I do consult with um, GCSI and sometimes I tell them I know, right? <laughs> but I do tell them what we're looking for mm -hmm. and give them an opportunity to see if there's something out there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> they couldn't help oh, with the administration, well, yes. but um, I... <laughs> I do ask them um, quite often. Yeah. And I know that our, you know, our, our um, state level elected officials also support and send us things too, and they find them. Um, but again, that might be, you get it the day before and it's due, it's you true. know, and we don't have days opportunities. So yeah. Um, uh, Mayor Fortune, you had your hand up? Yeah. Yeah. I brought this up a couple of years ago and, and, and the, the looks on staff's face at the time was like, this is what we spend all of our time doing. What do you think we do, Steve? Um, 
just want to 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 reiterate that and say that I think I, I agree. I think it would be a, a good use of um, time, especially for the administration part. I know we've been working with Christopher on on the dam and things come up very quickly and and he's got other uh things he needs to be doing and so putting putting those grants together in a, a, a timely fashion um is critical um the other thing i wanted to comment on is uh one of the resources that we have um in the city is rutherford pool and it serves the entire community as well as the outlying area um they are struggling now there was a grants cycle that went through for uh, funding parks that uh, Prospect Park had a project for and and we we're alternating between the pool and and uh, resurfacing, which is a significant uh, chunk of money and uh, Prospect Park project. Um, and so I'd like to to put in for um, at least some seed funding for that of $70,000 to, to deal with the um, resurfacing in the pool. Um, last year when when this was uh, came up, the, there was basically debris at the bottom of the pool that um, okay. was there all summer. Okay. Um, and so, you know, a lot of, I think this is one of the resources that is most utilized from every ward in the city. Um, mm -hmm. And they've done an amazing job of, of raising funds, but um, hard. I'd like to assist them on that. And I guess to follow up on that, so, in previous years, we've allocated funds to multiple entities, including Rutherford Pool. Was that something that also was taken out, or was that? Not, I, I know that this is separate. What you're asking, but I want to know if that's something that we we did. Um, we have not done anything since they became their own five hundred one c three. But I think we could still, um, you know, if you want to allocate a match, that's what he's saying. Seat money. Okay. They were to get something, but and that lessons they ask from the state, uh, right? Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure that I mm -hmm. and I'll check the numbers with Jessica. Do other services? Oh, oh. oh, okay. Oh, so we do support. All right. Thank you. All right. Any additional? Oh, uh, Councilmember Tucson. Um, and then in respect to grants and whatnot, will we be continuing the youth mini grant? Um, the, the or youth mini grants? Yes. I mean, that's a few guys. Um, that's, okay. So all everything was taken out. So we would have. I would want to. Um, definitely. Go ahead. I would want to <laughs> definitely continue the um the youth mini grant policy. Yeah. And the amount of. What was the 25? 25, 25,000? Yeah. Yeah, 25,000. This year? Yeah. We so we always have so you're saying that we have we currently have funds that have been unexpended in that item will it roll over so if we but if we allocate okay all right thank you that's interesting it is because we've ex exhausted it the previous years right we haven't had any yeah that's a good i mean listen it's fun all right uh anything additional one mississippi mm -hmm. Five hundred thousand dollars for the dam. No, <laughs> you don't stress me. Okay. <laughs> Can I ask anybody who wants to continue the earmark? Earmark twenty five. I'm sorry, the two no. million for the train. That's an interesting conversation. That's a very deep conversation. I've I've looked at that as as kind of a in house savings. Account. That's what I keep looking at as too. Okay. Yeah. Rainy like day. our safety net okay we'll leave it there and i don't see that it's going to happen i mean you know ridership is not up you know the, the minute we say money for somebody else and then, then somebody then we are needed move to have it in the township and you know it's that whole conversation i've never been a fan of that but i like having a rainy day okay i do think we should keep it i just like to ask each year yeah i know it, it's 
twinkles in your eyes when you see it, right? But yep. I think it's important. I think we should keep it in the, okay. in the saving. All right. If, if there's nothing further, I want to make all hearts are open, all minds are clear. We can move on. But if not, all right. Oh, wait. Oh, all right. That's right. Okay. You almost, you almost missed it. Okay, go ahead. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. So this is, okay, this is something I was going to, I mean, I don't know. This might not be, you know what? I'll just wait. I'll come back. Oh. It'll come back because I don't know what the cost is. It's just something. How much? Okay, I'll bring it up now. Okay, for our recycling. Oh no, you know what? Every time I go to talk, Bonnie leaves. She, she, she said, knows what's up. Email her. She said, email her. Oh yeah, you want to wait for Bonnie? She's yeah, because okay. nobody's gonna have the answer. No, no, no. <laughs> it's fine. It'll, I'll just wait for later. I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead, Mayor Pro Tem. I just want to say that that while we're doing the budgeting and there, we can make amendments at this point. I mean, we we always have amendments throughout the year. Yeah. And so you know, these are great Absolutely. ideas and. Mm -hmm. and Fleshed out, but you know we we entertain budget amendments all, all year right. long, and um, this is a good good set of priorities. And then you know, other things that that's true. Really Two million dollars. That's good to say because there's things that we spend, things we don't spend, <clears throat> even after we've you know amended allocated funds to it, and so things have been flow all year long. I forget what this the, the graph looked like in terms of when we're supposed to go broke. 2039 or whatever it was. Um, you know, if we're not going two million dollars factored into that or what? I don't, it's still, we, did, we never took it out. Yeah, it's never, it was still there. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Thank you. Um, I have one last thing. Um, in terms of the budget, and I would be remiss if we don't say something. Um, her bicentennial is going to need support from us, um, and so I don't know what a number is because I haven't actually gotten a request from. Two hundred dollars. Um, I haven't really gotten a request from the the co committee, um, but I, I would at least want to put aside or factor that in. Um, and that's I out of this current budget, though, right? Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're talking about. Oh, never mind. You're right. Never mind. But they're probably going to ask us for money because okay. they don't need support. So never mind. You're right. I'm listen. When both of these are listed, I just <laughs> okay. All right. If if we're done, sure. wonderful. Thank you all. Great priorities. I appreciate everybody's patience and also just sharing um, what we think you know should go into the budget and hopefully we will be able to come out in agreement and everybody be satisfied in a few weeks. All right, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, you have our next resolution, Not 093. Got a resolution 2023-093, uh, resolution to authorize the city manager to file a claim for grant payment for protecting my pension grant program for the city of Ypsilanti fire and police pension system. It is resolved by the council of the city of Ypsilanti that whereas the city of Ypsilanti is a qualified unit and operates the Ypsilanti fire and police pension system created under act 345 of 1937. And whereas the Ypsilanti fire and police pension system has a funded ratio below 60%. And whereas the protecting my um, pension program was created to help Michigan's underfunded municipal pension systems. Under the fiscal year 2022-23 budget, the Michigan Department of Treasury uh, has appropriated $750 million uh, to establish and operate a local unit municipal pension principal payment grant program for qualified retirement systems with a funded ratio below 60% as defined in the Protecting Local Government Retirement and Benefits Act, Public Act 202 of 2020. 2017, and whereas the grant application requires a governing body resolution authorizing the chief administrative officer to file a claim, now therefore be it resolved that the City of Council of the City of Ypsilanti does hereby authorize and direct Francis McMullen, Ypsilanti City Manager, to file a claim for a grant payment under the My Pension Grant Program, and I so move. Or the moved and supported. Uh, any presentation from... Oh, Reagan, good evening. Good evening, Council. Talking about grants. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the state of Michigan did uh, appropriate $750 million for, uh, as a pension program for 
municipalities that, that has an underfunded pension system. And uh, we are, since the city is underfunded uh, by 51, uh, close to 51% with our fire and police pension system, then we are qualified for this grant. And uh, what's presented to you is the a requirement for us to be able to apply for that grant. So if approved, we may get up to uh, close to $6 million. So open pray, <laughs> but uh, there's gonna be 750 million divided into a lot of municipalities. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for finding this opportunity. <laughs> and that only takes us up to the 60% one, right? Right. Everybody okay? Any questions? You have questions? Just want to note that the, the application wasn't filled out all the way. It was missing Francis's huh? title and stuff at the, at the end. Oh, in the attachment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Claire Kalenga, please call the roll. Councilmember D. Simmons? Yes. Councilmember J. Simmons? Yes. Councilmember King? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Wilcoxon? Yes. Mayor Brown? Yes. Councilmember Sweet? Yes. Councilmember Tucson? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. We get $6 million. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so nice. Um, uh, Councilmember D. Simmons, you have our next resolution, 094. Whereas the city of Ypsilanti has been allocated funds by the Michigan Department of Transportation to perform a reconstruction of Huron River Drive from Cornell to LaForge inclusive and whereas the city manage the city engineer OHM has prepared a proposal to provide construction engineering services for the project and whereas construction engineering is necessary to begin the project in the 2023 construction season now, therefore, be it resolved that the city of Ypsilanti approves the proposal from OHM for construction engineering services for an amount of $584,895,000, that the city manager is authorized to sign this proposal and any change orders may be approved by the city manager to facilitate the completion of this work. I so move. Or Moved and supported. Um, Director Bonnie's not in here, but oh, Rachel's here. Rachel's here. I know. I'm like Rachel's here. I'm gonna come up. Yeah, come sure, on, please. <clears throat> good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council. So, um, this project has been on the on the plan for the county of Huron River Drive from Cornell to LaForge for years now, and we're finally we finally um, went out to bid. We have a bidder, and it's going to we pretty much have a pre construction meeting tomorrow. So they're gonna um, be very use all summer pretty much to do this to do this work, and hopefully uh, be out by the time EMU comes in. But <laughs> so um, yeah, OHM is providing the CE services, and um, it's a requ we administer it for MDOT, kind of. So there's a lot of requirements. So um, if you have questions, let me know. Questions for Rachel. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, seeing none, Clark Lego, please call the roll. Councilmember Jay Simmons? Yes. Councilmember King? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Wilcoxon? Yes. Mayor Brown? Yes. Councilmember Sweet? Yes. Councilmember Tucson? Yes. Councilmember D. Simmons? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Councilmember Sweet, you have our next resolution. Resolved by the Council of the City of Ypsilanti, whereas the City of Ypsilanti Council under the Ypsilanti City Code requires a change in auditing firm after a five-year continuous annual auditing of the city, and whereas the city posted on January 10th, 2023, a request for proposals for professional services to conduct the annual audit for year ending on June 30th, 2023, through June 30th, 2027 was posted at bidnetdirect.com, whereas six bids were received and after review and evaluation of proposals, reference checks and audit fees, the bids submitted by Clark Schaefer and Hackett are lowest qualified bid to serve and meet the city needs and it meets the best interest of the city. And whereas Clark Schaefer Hackett's three-year contract includes audit of the city's comprehensive annual financial report, including primary government and component units audit of the city, the Ypsilanti fire and police retirement system, including insurance of separate report on the system, 
Also, if required, compliance audit of the city's federal program in accordance with the Federal Single Audit Act and the uniform guidance if needed. Required communication with those charged with governance and advice and assistance with the implementation of new accounting and auditing standards as applicable to the city. And includes assistance in the preparation of the annual comprehensive financial report submission to Government Finance Officers Association, Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting, and now be it hereby resolved that the city, Ypsilanti City Council approve a three-year contract with Clark Schaefer Hackett in the amount of one sixty-seven one hundred for professional accounting services beginning with fiscal year ending June 30th, 2023 through June 30th, 2025. And I so move. Support. Moved and supported. Reagan, it's you again, I believe. <laughs> Uh, no comment. <laughs> yeah, you may, uh, if you have any questions um, uh, about the contract. So every five years, we have to change our auditors as per our charter. And our former uh, auditors have now served at five years. So we had six bidders and uh, we found, we are recommending Clark since they have the lowest qualified bid for the service. And is this... um. The cost, I mean, I'm going to support this, but is it much different than what our previous auditing firm was? Uh, before it was around 44000 and now it went up around $9,000 per year. Any other questions from council? All right, seeing none. Thank you, Reagan. Council Member King? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Wilcoxon? Yes. Mayor Brown? Yes. Council Member Sweet? Yes. <clears throat> Councilmember Tucson? Yes. Councilmember D. Simmons? Yes. Councilmember J. Simmons? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Councilmember Tucson, I believe you have our next resolution, 096. Indeed. Resolution number 2023-0966. It is resolved by the Council of the City of Ypsilanti that whereas Juneteenth was recognized as a city holiday by passage of resolution number 2021-068 on April 6, 2021, and whereas Ypsilanti, Michigan has a proud record of fighting bigotry, slavery, and racism, including prior to the Civil War being a part of the Underground Railway to help slaves to freedom and sending soldiers black and white to fight and die for the Union in the Civil War to free the slaves and passing ordinances to prohibit discrimination. And whereas June 19th, 1865 marks when the final group of black Americans understood that they were free when Union Army General Gordon Granger landed in Galveston, where he read General Order Number 3, stating that all slaves were free and that, excuse me, and that former masters and slaves were absolutely equal in personal and property rights. And whereas Juneteenth, June 19th, 1865, acting as the date of emancipation, became a longstanding day of celebration meant to honor Black Americans' resilience and the end of slavery. And whereas it is fitting and proper for either Solani to honor and celebrate June 19th of every year as Juneteenth and whereas we must work together to continue to build a just Ypsilanti free from prejudice, bigotry, and racism. Now, therefore, now therefore, it is hereby resolved by the Ypsilanti City Council that June 19th be recognized by the city of Ypsilanti and display the Juneteenth flag from a window in council chambers viewable from Huron Street through the duration of the month and I so move. Support. Work been moved and supported. Any comments or discussion? I have one question. Um, Clark Falango. So when the flag goes up, um, thank you. does it matter what day or can we decide what day so that we can have folks come help put the flag up? I would just put it up on June 1st. On June 1st? Okay. All right. I'll plant your tree. <laughs> oh, I won't be there. Oh, I won't. June first. No, I want it. No, no, no. June first needs to go up on the first day. Okay. <laughs> Any other comments or discussion? Seeing none, Clark Kalingo, please call the roll. Mayor Pro Tem Wilcoxon. Yes. Mayor Brown. Yes. Council Member Sweet. Yes. <clears throat> Council Member Tucson. Yes. Council Member D Simmons. Yes. Council Member J Simmons. Yes. Council Member King. Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Council Member Jay Simmons, you have our next resolution. Resolution number 2023-097 resolved by the Council of the City of Ypsilanti 
Whereas President Bill Clinton declared June Gay and Lesbian Pride Month in June of 2000 to commemorate the June 1969 Stonewall Riots in Lower Manhattan. And whereas President Barack Obama expanded the commemoration further by declaring June Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Pride Month. And whereas Pride Month is not only a time of celebration, but it is also an opportunity to peacefully protest and raise political awareness of current issues facing the LGBTQ plus community. And whereas much ground has been gained since the 1969 Stonewall riots, however, injustice and negative attitudes remain that threaten the LGBTQ plus community. And whereas the city of Ypsilanti has a proud place in the history of LGBTQ plus equality in the successful passing of our inclusive non-discriminate or discrimination ordinance in 1998, a historic victory that received national attention and acclaim. And whereas, while the city of Ypsilanti has a long and proud tradition of being an inclusive community, it recognizes as long as injustice exists, it threatens all that has been accomplished. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Ypsilanti City Council of the city of Ypsilanti declare June as Pride Month and direct staff to fly the Pride flag from a window in council chambers viewable from here on street through the duration of the month and I so move. Support. I moved and supported. Same question. I won't be here, <laughs> but it'll go up. June first. June. I know. June first. I yeah. Uh, any comment or discussion from council? Good stuff. And seeing none, clerk, whenever you're ready. Mayor Brown. Yes. Council Member Sweet. Yes. Council Member Tucson. Yes. Council Member D Simmons. Yes. Council Member J Simmons. Yes. Council Member King. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Wilcoxon. Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Wonderful. Uh, Council Member King, you have our final resolution. Resolved by the Council of the City of Ypsilanti that the following residents be appointed to the City of Ypsilanti boards and commissions as indicated below. Ann Baxter, Art Commission, Kathy Thornborn, Parks and Rec, and Devin Shelton, Sustainability Committee. I so move. Support. Supported. Any discussion or questions? Arts Commission can now commence meeting again. So that is great. One down, more to go. Uh, all right. Uh, Sir Kalinga, please follow the roll. Council Member Sweet. Yes. Thank you. Mayor Brown. <laughs> yes. Council Member D. Simmons. Yes. Council Member J. Simmons. Yes. Council Member King. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Wilcoxon. Yes. Council Member Tucson. Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Wonderful. All right. Now we're on to board and commission liaison reports. Police advisory commission. Um, if I'm not mistaken, we are meeting next Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. And also we have two youth spots yeah. that are just open. And if anybody has any of their own youth, their kids, cousins, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Any any youth that um want to participate in um the police advisory commission, please send them our way. We need them. Thank you. Uh, oh, HRC, so sad. No update. Arts Commission, well, they can meet now. Yeah, I have an update late June after they <laughs> commence their meeting. Thank All you. right, Parks and Rec. Um, their meeting was canceled this month due to some building issues, so next month. Sustainability? Yeah, it was just, uh, let's see here. We did meet. Not uh, enough people were there for the group to do their elections, but they talked about different roles um, that they, you know, that uh, they would be looking for folks to play. We did talk about the process for uh, nominations and um, and ways to make sure that they are updated about when people apply. Um, they. Um, they're also, uh, thinking about a different, a plan around for Earth Day, um, of maybe doing, not doing the, um, big Earth Day event every year, um, but maybe doing different kinds of activities, um, just because of the amount of, uh, time and energy it takes to do the big event. Um, and so uh, one of the commissioners was suggesting that that happens maybe every two years, which would also put us on for uh, in 2025 being part of like the next big one, like it's a big anniversary for Earth Day is so um, and maybe doing some smaller events um, in between. And uh, the group also talked about 
uh, putting together a, a list of different speakers to come and um, different activities to do for some planning. So, thank you, uh, HDC. Oh, nothing terrific. <laughs> planning Commission. Uh, we meet this week. All right. Uh, ZBA. Oh, wait, uh, Christopher. Oh, right, because the building closed. All right, planning commission meeting will be at the freight house tomorrow. Good to know. Uh, ZBA. Your report. All right, liaison report, SEMCOG. Nothing at this time. All right, Watts? Uh, nothing for our meeting this month is canceled. Okay, Urban County. Um, I believe our next meeting is... Hmm. Oh, there was a meeting earlier this month and Holly attended that. Um, and so if there are updates for folks, I'll make sure that we get them and send them out because um, she attended in my absence. Um, DEA, the meeting's on Thursday. Is there anything special, Christopher, that folks need to know? Yeah, crazy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll use the, All right. The end of the no spin on my, okay, wonderful. Uh, Rutherford Pool. Uh, we met. Uh, they had their opening. They have to contract with the company to open, and they did that early uh, because of conflicts. Uh, so the water and everything is set up in the pool uh, on May 8th. Um, they got more money for uh, lessons. That has been uh, interesting. The, the last couple of years, a lot of money has been flowing from the Metro Parks in Washtenaw County. Um, and Metro Parks came up with almost another $10,000 for lessons. So all the lessons uh, this summer will be free. Um, I mentioned to them that the youth grants were available and underutilized and that um, there are a lot of kids that come that that don't have um, swimsuits. So every year they do collections and, and go out and buy swimsuits to have on hand, swimsuits and goggles for, for kids taking lessons. And so... I propose that they submit uh, a youth grant for for doing that. Um, uh, nope, they're working with HR uh, to get staff ready. They have uh, three new hires and lots of returning folks that are moving up the ladder of uh, guarding. Um, so, but there's always still challenges with uh, the infrastructure for the pool and. Uh, I will get more information uh, regarding the cost of the resurfacing and where they are. They've had to change um, companies that they're they're getting the estimate from. So, that. thank you, bicentennial. They meet next month, so I'll have an update next time or next week. Excuse me. Yeah. Oh, next week. Okay. They meet. Yep. Uh, all right. Council proposed business. Uh, Council member Tucson. Um, I guess the only council proposed business that I would have would be just for the youth for the YPAC. I'm just trying to find youth to get on to get an experience of what it is that's going on in Ipsy with the police and whatnot. Uh, council member King, I'm gonna go back. No, that's that's <laughs> you said me. Oh, okay. I thought I was gonna be one. Like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm ping ponging today, trying to do something different. <laughs> oh, um, I just want to talk about the HBCU event that's happening at Washtenaw. I um don't have the flyer. Maybe I can look. keep going. I'll try to. Yeah. So it's for local high schools. I know they have included. I know WSC Academy, Ypsilanti, Belleville, Lincoln, and the community can come out and participate, I believe, from two to three. So I just want to bring awareness to that. You do have to sign up. They want you to register so they can know how many people will be attending. I um, Next time, we'll probably talk about a Juneteenth event. I don't have all the information, but I believe it's on the weekend of June the 24th. It, so just to add, um, so some of the represent, representatives they'll have are um, from Mississippi Valley State University, Southern University, New Orleans, Jackson State, Alabama State, Tuskegee, and many more. And correct, the high school and community students are there from 9 to 2, and then family and community members can attend from 1 to 2. And there is a registration required. For you What's the date? June 2nd, Friday, June 2nd. There's going to be a Divine Nine show-off, swag, marching band, music, food, giveaways, and much more. Yeah. Yeah. 
Sounds exciting. Scroll on. Are you crazy? <laughs> no way. All right. Council member Jay Simmons. Um, one thing I just wanted to draw attention that last week was um, uh, Police Week, um, National Police Week, where, um, oh, did you? I'm so sorry. No, no you're fine. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'll just say it's in uh, 1962, President Kennedy, uh, he proclaimed uh, May 15th as National Peace Officers uh, Memorial Day. Um, and so that's um, the calendar week in which May 15th falls is actually National Police Week. But I think they had activities last week in Washington. Um, but anyway, so it's this week, uh, pay special attention or recognition to law, law enforcement officers who have lost their lives in the line of duty. And so I just wanted to um, just draw attention that I think we've had at least one Ypsilanti officer who's lost his life in the line of duty. And uh, so I wanted to just draw some, what, what do you, uh, people always, you, you, um, you like social workers, they say like, give a, what's the phrase you use? I did have a new phrase. No, 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 it, there's like your term, um, give a tent, lift up. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> to lift. Oh, you want to lift? <laughs> I'm like, what? Okay. I always love her social work lingo. <laughs> so I just wanted to lift that up. There you go. Oh, so funny. Um, because I think Chief Moore sent out a really nice Carter. email about it. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. 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 Oh. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Yeah. Um, and then I just want to, I guess, also, I don't know if I'm lifting this up or not. I'm not lifting it up because they're really heavy, the new uh, recycle. Oh, <laughs> I know at least in Ward 2, they've had a lot of chatter um, about the um, people decided they're going to make it as a, like a, a small rental in their backyard. ADU. Excuse yeah. Wow. That's pretty dwelling unit. Yeah. Yes. That's hilarious. What's that? <laughs> oh yeah, I said I, at least in Ward Two, there's been a lot of chatter. Um, I said I was going to lift up also the um, recycling bins that went out, but I don't think they're too heavy for me to lift, so yeah. I wouldn't be. Um, so and we've yeah had a bit of chatter on that, but I mean, I to me, I'm excited about it, and um, it's surprisingly light though once you tilt and wheel it out to the street. So I want my trash can to be the same. I do too. I do too. <laughs> That's some more. I know. Trust yes. Me. No. Uh, please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I know just, I, I, my question, I guess, was, I know we had some, and there's going to be continued work on kind of the scheduling and calendar. Is, was it safe to say it's been worked out at least in the interim, I guess, for. Oh, got it. Yeah. Mm hmm Yep. Yeah. Okay. No idea how. Oh. Got it. Okay. And um, yeah, that, I, I'll ask you offline. I have another question, but anyways, I think that's it. I just wanted to kind of acknowledge this. <laughs> okay, that was funny. It was good. lift them up. Yes, House Member D Simmons. <laughs> Yes, yes. So um, I'll stay on the topic of recycling bins. Been a chatter in War 3 too. Um, and a couple of things I just uh, shared with some folks is that, yes, they are big. Wouldn't it be great? What if you only have to take your recycling out once per month? Woohoo! Time save. Yay, city. Um, two, uh, recognizing that the bins are serving not only single family households. Um, and so they have to be this, they're the same size and some of them serve multiple households. And so we have to keep in mind that we have multiple kind of households in the city. And this is a net gain. I'm saying this for everyone, net gain and benefit for the staff who, who will have more safety using these. So, Yay, big bins. Uh, <laughs> the one question I do have, um, because figuring out the scheduling, like I actually, when I got the flyer, I just looked at it and said, and gave up when I saw, didn't see when it would be. And so some people are very industrious and figured it out. 
But I'm wondering if we can have a more elegant solution, like stickers that say A and B, that then people who are in the A routes know that they're that week and people are in the B routes, and then they, then they don't have to remember, because I think people will forget anyway, um, even once they figure it out. So I'm wondering if that is something we could do, and I think that would make a lot of people really happy. That was the question I had where in terms of thinking about a budget piece where I was like, I'm not sure but, um, uh, in terms of what it would cost to print those and get those out to folks. But uh, I don't know if other people think that would be helpful, but I know that if I just have to look at my thing and I know I'm on this week, then that would be helpful for me. So we make the rules. I thought that'd be easy. Red. <laughs> no, no way. Um, I don't know what that's in reference to. Um, I probably shouldn't have outed myself in that way, but um, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Oh uh, no! Like, what is it? We're off completely. Yeah, yeah. It's a show. Okay, you know what? I'll come back. I'll offline, offline. Okay, and then the other thing. Um, so uh, yeah, is if that's something we can maybe do or consider. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to bring up is just more of a thank you, like the no mo may, uh, and really for me, I, I see this really as a start of a longer term conversation, but I do want to say that after we passed it, I actually had three <laughs> different residents contact me, um, around it saying whatever it was, they didn't know that we had already done something for it and so they were actually really happy to hear that we did do something because they were trying to be preemptive around being cited so I just want to say thank you and that I do think it's a long-term thing so that's it for now thank you council member sweet I don't have anything tonight okay mayor Porto trash bins oh They're yeah amazing I've made some many of the same points about frequency, you know, efficiency and cost savings and safety for staff and got back lots of uh, comments. Not so kind, but um, one of the things is uh, they are very large for uh, the elder community. And so I'm wondering if we can uh, have maybe smaller bins that are more um, manageable to the older crowd or uh go back to talking about the prob the uh programs that uh council former council members somerville had talked about in terms of uh uh neighborhood solutions to snow removal and garbage and i do this on a routine basis for many of my neighbors and um but having a program to do that um if we're not going to get smaller bins for them than to at least have a network so that uh, that stuff can be put out so um uh you know it's probably been maybe a meeting or two since i mentioned the dam i've already mentioned it today um we uh were awarded uh, a grant from the dnr and um the initial ask for this was this is for engineering studies and the uh um getting to the point of deconstructing the dam and so the initial ask was for 4.3 million dollars um they have a, a limited amount of money at the state that they're looking to for this program and they want to space it out over a, a number of years and a number of projects and they had two other projects that were very attractive that were way less money um and so we had a discussion a while back and this is just a refresher about some sort of partial funding how how we could get what we need and those other communities could get what they need um so what they did was they funded us to the tune of three million seven hundred eighty one thousand six hundred and fifty four dollars um and that is partial funding um the initial conversation before they went away to deliberate on this was whether we could get partial funding and then skip the and then have the commitment for the second round uh already in place and it seems like from this this letter from from uh the dam safety unit that uh they are encouraging encouraging us 
to uh, apply again. So we didn't get that uh, pre-commitment for the second round, but we did get 3.78 uh, out of 4.32. So um, that's awesome. Yay! Thank you, Christopher, and the rest of staff that were involved with this. And thank you, they're not here, but uh, Daniel Brown and uh, Rebecca Esselman and Anita at uh, uh, HRWC for um, always having our back and putting a lot of this information together for the narratives and things like that. And so this will go a long way to um, get the dam removed. Um, we still have to raise funding for the um, restoration part of this, uh, and there are different uh, funding streams for, for that, and we'll keep uh, working on that. But this is, this is awesome. This is, this is a great thing. We've been waiting on this um, response for, what, a month and a half, two months now. Um, and, you know, every week it's like, what do we hear? What do we hear? So it's good to have that in place. Um, uh, infrastructure. Um, one of my constituents is concerned about a, a sinkhole that has been marked, and, and I've communicated with, with Bonnie about this, and... Um, that particular one is being looked at, but I, as I go around the city, there are a lot of these, and you, you may notice them as well. There may be a drain uh, in a street, and the drain itself looks great, but about two feet from it, there's a hole um, because the the water is somehow draining around the drain and and washing away the backfill and doing that. And so there's one on Cortland, um, on the south side of Washtenaw just past the uh the commercial no uh Cortland is uh down another block um and there's a concrete drain and then there's two holes right around the drain and also on that street and this is weird because I think that's the boundary for the township and so I'm not sure who's involved with this but halfway down the block there is a wave that is significant and if you're running in the dark you'll notice it because you when you're down but um that looks like it's about to be um the, the pavement is still smooth but it is is depressed probably about eight inches um over the the two holes are probably about three feet in diameter um they're not actually holes they're just a ripple um but they're significant and that's coming up too so steve wouldn't it be great if we put money into like a drains you know to do a survey right of <laughs> our drains and Mm -hmm. um, to that end, um, HRWC always does a really great job of uh, uh, presenting to um, different uh, government groups on green infrastructure, and Ypsilanti uh, faces a different um, situation with green infrastructure than a lot of our surrounding communities because we are so built out. And so lots of engineering uh, solutions to to stormwater um, are not feasible for us. Um, so I'd like to have them come give a presentation specifically for an urban environment and a built out environment um, so that we can piggyback those two things together. So um, got a complaint from a constituent of one of our um, building inspectors uh, entering the home uh, unannounced. Um, and so John, I'll catch up with you about that. Um, they were expecting them, but uh, the, the inspector entered the house without knocking and freaked this person out. So um, I'll catch up with you about that. So. All right. That's it. Okay. All right. Um, communications from me. Hmm. I feel like folks have said all the things I was going to talk about. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm just surprised that people are upset about the bins, man. I was so excited about my recycle bin. Oh, and I did. I got um, some folks reached out to me who live like right on the cusp of the township and their neighbors in the township and they're in the city. They were so happy about the bins and the folks, their next door neighbors were like, we want nice new bins like these. So anyway. I'm just, you know, I think we'll get used to them. And also, I do think there's something, is there an issue with like, for instance, our older population utilizing the, you're not allowed to use the red ones anymore? No. 
situation what happens to all the red bins now Okay, I had someone ask me about that as well. No. Okay. Yeah, that's what. Oh. That's what I was asking. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that makes too. a little sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course, he would. Mm-hmm. Okay. He did. That's why I was asking because he asked me and I told him to ask you because I did not know the answer. Okay. The red bins that are newer, I think those have a recycle symbol on the bottom. They do not. Okay. Okay. So maybe it's an older. Because I think one of the ones I have is, uh, yeah. Okay. Are you saying recycle or recycle? Yeah, that's what a lot of people have been saying, but it sounds like some of them don't have the thing. But I swear one of them I have, but I have a pretty old one too. Ancient. Okay. Okay. Yeah. On wheels. Hey, Pops, that's how your hand go up. You have a question? Yeah, mine. Oh, yeah, we got yeah, one of mine got a big old hole in the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, if they're, you know, still doing all right, Jasper would like them. <laughs> so, okay. All right. That's that's all for me. Uh, city manager. Okay. Uh, oh, I just oh. want to say thank you for um, actually um, your patience with the construction. This um, hopefully tomorrow will be the last closure, but most of our employees are working from home, those that can't work. Are we just minding any, any news for them about the construction? It's only going to get worse. Um, oh, yeah, people, yeah, so okay. Thursday, there's going to be some uh, that shut down and they have to get out of there. It is in service of the wonderful uh, medical testing, however. So you may have noticed me running out during the meeting. That yeah. is because we had our test run this morning. So you heard earlier on today, there was testing. Oh, thank you. Oh. All right. Thank you for doing that. Um, <laughs> yeah, people are not very excited about just drink all drink the, the damn. <laughs> the last of the lead water. The lead water. Oh, be delicious. Boom. That is all the flavor. What, Andrew? You say? <laughs> it's from. It's not from the sink. <laughs> <laughs> we know you wouldn't give us that water. That's how you get it's your from mineral. The toilet. You get your mineral. <laughs> just trying to keep. Okay. It. Um. <laughs> y'all are really wilding out okay communication so our final budget session is june 6 at 6 p.m for second reading and then we have the chapter 7 work session on june 20th um at 6 p.m as well um okay this is our second opportunity for public comment um since we have no physical audience unless our staff want to come up and you know tell us a little something or two if there's anyone online um there is an individual online annie i'll allow them to speak now oh i wonder who that is Good evening. Good evening, Council. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Hi, good evening. Um, So uh, Annie Somerville, Ward 3, also County Commissioner District 6. Um, I have spoken to a number of council members in the last 48 hours, um, but I just wanted to come and publicly share um, my personal opinion on a lawsuit that has been filed against the city of Ypsilanti. Um, I knew that this was coming because in many um, pro-democracy organizations in the state, um, they have been watching um, an organization across the country called the Thomas More, um, I forget the last, the third part of the name. Um, They've been targeting college towns and their one goal is um, in in this um, realm is voter suppression and limiting access to voting. So 
Um, I just want to publicly express that I hope um, council will consider fighting this. Um, the people of Michigan, um, a number of times in the last five years, have adopted pro-democracy initiatives um, by ballot proposal. And in our state constitution, we now are guaranteed the fundamental right um, to vote. So um, the information being required by landlords to share is nonpartisan. It's four pages total. Um, out of a much larger packet that requires basic tenant landlord information provided by the state of Michigan. Um, and I just would also encourage that um, some encouragement is that there's a, a number of pro, um, pro-democracy, pro um, pro-voter access um, lawyers that are ready to assist um, the city in, in this fight um, to protect access to um, democracy. So that is all. Um, I wish you all well. Thank you, Commissioner Somerville. Uh, I see anyone else? No, their hands are raised, Council. All right, seeing none, I will entertain a motion to move us into closed session. I move that we go to a closed session. Report. Do we have to state the numbers? Like, can you restate your motion and for MCL fifteen point two six eight pending ah, litigation? Sorry. MCL to 16 back. 15, 2, 6, 8. Sorry, didn't see it there. Uh, I move to go to a closed session for MCL 15.268E to discuss pending litigation in the city of Ypsilanti versus Greenlee. And I support. All right. Any, uh, call the roll, please. Councilmember Tucson? Yes. Councilmember D. Simmons? Oh. Councilmember J. Simmons? Yes. Councilmember King? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Wilcoxon? Yes. Mayor Brown? Yes. Council Member Sweet? Yes. With six yes votes and one absence, uh, Annie, council talking? adjourns to closed session. Okay. Do we have to go downstairs still? Do we just stay here? Since we have shut this, since we have no audience? Uh, I'll entertain a motion to move back into open session. I'd like to move to move back into open session. Sport. Aye. 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 So we don't have to roll call that one, do we? No. Okay, wonderful. Um, no problem. So a motion to suspend uh, ordinance 58-123 based off city attorney advice until the ordinance is amended. Is there? Um, I move. Support. Support. Any discussion? I would hope not. No. <laughs> okay. Seeing none, clerk, please call the world. Councilmember D. Simmons. Pass. Councilmember J. Simmons. Yes. Councilmember King. No. Mayor Pro Tem Wilcoxon. Yes. Mayor Brown. Yes. Councilmember Sweet. Yes. Councilmember Tucson. Yes. Councilmember D. Simmons. Yes. Motion carries with six yes, one no. Thank you, everyone. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh,